Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to another subscriber craft review video. And today there is absolutely no stopping and standing still because it is the Python Light Cruiser by Awellner. And we have a problem with this review, not because of the ship. The ship is fantastic, that's I guess the main point of the review. Like, well first up, in brief, really good ship. Like, I love it. Very impressed with it. It's pretty and it works really well. The problem is, is that uh, one thing I didn't think about when making these, when coming up with the idea for these subscriber reviews, is what happens if someone sends a ship in that you flat out do not understand. Like they are so much more experienced than me in this game that uh, I have no choice but to look at a lot of their work and just go. Yep, I'm sure that works perfectly fine. Uh, carry on. And that's kind of what this ship is like for me. It is, well, just looking at it, it, it is a ship, it is a cruiser, and it's put together in a way that I don't think I will ever be able to do in From the Depths, because I think a Wellner is at the point where, like, there's basic guidelines for building stuff in front of the depths, and he is at the point where he goes, you know what, nah, I do what I want, and I know it will work, which is why I do what I want. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, this thing, if a novice to front, well clearly, if a novice tried to make something like this in front of the depths, it would never bloody work, but a Wilner has made something which is just fascinatingly weird. Well, for one thing, lots of jetty blades inside, so this thing goes over 20 meters per second, and that's mostly because of these things. There's one set of jetty blade poles in there, there's another one in the middle, I think that's it actually. And this th you might have noticed that uh, this thing's in combat mo mode and it keeps moving. That is because the jetty blades are set to only start or stop when above or below a certain altitude, about five meters above the water level. And I have no idea what he's done with the propellers here. I think that there's just an ACB somewhere that just starts them when spawning, but I haven't been able to find it because frankly, like, the inside of the ship is a compact nightmare for someone like me. But I'm forgetting myself, I should really go over the my usual pros and cons of, of yeah, that I go through when reviewing stuff like this. So, first off, very pretty. It is like, it's got lots of stuff which uh, is just frankly very pretty indeed. I've, what the hell even... Yeah, I love how people are using steam boxes like this and just steam parts just make well to make little cranes and stuff like that and just it's very pretty very cool the well now has cotton full on well very quickly onto the new turret on turret action you can see that and he's using elevation only turrets which is a s little bit well clever well let's say yeah it is quite a lot more clever than what i was doing he's but these ammunition things Holy crap, they are. He uses he makes turret rings out of ammo clips. See, a Wellner doesn't follow your rules, a Wellner does his own thing. I just got distracted. So anyway, so very pretty, lots of decoration. Like wherever he wherever he likes, there's little side guns. It looks like a real ship. On the outside. And it is quite fast so if we get it back in the water so the deadly blades get going again just with the those deadly plate poles in it it gets to around 16 meters per second 17 any higher nope that's about it and then you throw that in now it's going up to 22 which is reasonable speed for any ship really Let's stop that and it's got well there's like I know, I know what you're doing, man. On the Steam Workshop page for this thing, you will see it has a medium strength lamp session, and I immediately call rubbish on that because, uh, 
where is the lambs? There's all kinds of lambs. There's little lamb things here. In fact, let me show you them. One, two, three, four. So, lamb system down here. And it's not very big, and once again, like, I, I love you, man, but I hate you because I can't figure out how to make a laser system this small and this effective. For the life of me, I might have to rip it out of your ship entirely and stick it in one of mine. But in any case, uh, very good lamp system. Like, I was testing this thing uh, repeatedly against the Skiller, just for comparison, and the Skiller, well, frankly, did not do well. Uh, cheap Metacraft is not real match for something like this. And that's partially because this lamp system, medium strength, was blowing... Uh, 16 1,500mm cram shells out of the air quite consistently. Entire volleys just boom boom boom. So if that's medium gauge, I would hate to see a well know when he's actually making a big lamp system. Or maybe I'd love it. No, I'd hate it. I would really hate it. I would have a love-hate relationship with that lamp system. So, what else? So it's got a lamp system, and so crams and uh, missiles don't really bother it that much. And it also has this. I just earlier today tested this thing against a Spectre, which is a very missile spammy steel strider ship, and... What the hell? Oh well, no, it doesn't follow your rules. This... Well, I guess that's validation for the APS tutorial I was planning on making anyway. Just every time you look in detail at something on the ship, it's like, what? 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 So this uh, is an anti-missile turret that blows stuff clean out of the sky. It has a timed fuse up. Yeah, there it is. It's got a laser target underneath there. Again, never occurred to me to do that, although it might have been possible. And, well... This thing makes sure we can blow up entire missile volleys coming in that the lambs misses, so that's impressive at least. So, in, in other words, this thing is almost immune to missile swarms, and by the way, it does have passive sonar, so torpedoes aren't really a good idea. Well, acoustic torpedoes aren't a thing that bothers it much. And it is very well armed. So you see it's got these little missiles here, little EMP missiles. Fins, fins, verbal foster. So these are quite basic little missile, little missile turrets. It has simple lasers, and these incidentally make, like, primarily for anti-aircraft purposes, I'd imagine, but uh, they also make damn good submarine killers, because I was testing my favorite sub against this, and getting quite frustrated in the process. And uh, this thing was making mincemeat of it, because as soon as it got within range of these things, fight over. It, these things just fried it completely. So yeah, simple lasers are actually very, very good weapons. I've been messing around with them myself. They are supremely good for just secondary purposes, blowing things up at close range and just knocking small aircraft out of the sky, and uh, that is precisely what these things here on the back are for, and they do a really good job of it. It's got big guns, two 456mm Railgun Hesh shells, I believe. I think they're Hesh. I think, I think so. Oh, for crying out loud. We'll get to it eventually. 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 Oh my fucking... From the depths, come on. Boom, there. Okay. Yeah. Big armored turrets right here, and yes, that is a railgun. I have no idea how these things work. It's got... Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no, this thing isn't even remotely symmetrical. Oh, I feel sick. Oh, I feel sick. Oh, someone hold me. Blue and red and all that stuff. See, I can't review this. It's too good. So in any case, yeah, once again, no magazines, just autoloaders. See, I've experimented with guns like this before, and they actually do work quite well. It's just they're a little bit more ex they're a little bit more expensive and <gasps> air caps. A well known you naughty person. So when it gets, where the hell are the inputs on this thing? I want to see. Eh, yeah, come on, where are you? There you go. What? 
What? What? I didn't even know that. It's got... Disruptor conduit? What? What? This wasn't on the workshop. This isn't so much a review as me looking at this thing going, What? Say what? Eh, are we in here yet? Does- is this the one that uses hash? Oh boy, I hope so. See, look at this- How do you build something like this? It's not symmetrical at all, it's spaghetti junction in here. No, go away. Nope, this is also disruptor. Where the f- What? What? Oh no, he didn't. Oh, he did. Oh, well, no. Oh, I feel giddy. Oh, he is a, he is a evil man. Oh, he's got mixed ammo in it, which actually is, isn't is that radical an idea. It's just I'm always too lazy to do it. So there you go. There's the main difference. I'm lazy. A well, is not. There's even six-way connectors in this thing. Mother of God. Is there no stopping this madman? Okay, I'm getting distracted yet again. It's got, uh... It's got all this kind of stuff. It's got fancy cannons, very fancy put together. It's got a lot of torpedoes. And uh, as on the workshop page, it's got eight six meter torpedoes and 12 nine meter torpedoes. And uh, yep, there's a few on the side here, but the torpedo turrets are actually blue. Which is quite cunning because it means you don't have to stick a, oh God, this thing is enormous. Uh, I do ill. Maybe that was just my lunch. It was just instant noodles. Blech. Don't eat ins Do not eat instant noodles, kids. They're gross and bad. I'm getting flashbacks of the tur right now. That's uh, not pretty. So yeah, it's got. It is very well armed and uh, very well, very well defended with missiles and whatnot. And well, if you look at the armor, its armor isn't spectacular. It's a layer on the side here, layer of metal, layer of stone. Another layer of metal. It's actually not bad, actually. It's double double metal and stone, so this thing is pretty much EMP proof as well. Look at the deck armor. Yeah, multiple layers there. Spaced armor, so heat and hash isn't, uh, won't bother this so much. God damn it, a well known he's sort of everything. No wonder the skiller was having trouble with this. Also, it's got lots of hydrofoil, so good luck trying to sink it. It's got repair bots, so good luck trying to uh, damage it in any meaningful way. It's got AIs scattered throughout the ship. It's just very cunningly put together. All I can really go is like, oh, well done. Come over to my house sometime. Uh, build a thing and let me watch you do it, because otherwise I'll just be confused. I'll be confused either way anyway. Okay, so uh, I've gushed at length about this thing, so is there anything I found wrong with it? Well, I was going to say that this thing chews through materials, but uh, I tested it earlier and it really doesn't. It's like, it kind of just picks it. It's got a steam engine in front, but it's an electrical steam engine that only turns on. It pretty much only turns on when... Yeah, so... Battery above 80%, below 50%, so... This thing doesn't burn materials if it doesn't have to, so very artfully done. And this thing has so much ammunition on board, it doesn't actually use much materials to make ammo, so... There's that idea. So it's, it's efficient, as well as being mind-bogglingly complicated and effective. It is, like, basically every... Like, drawback I can think of, but this thing is also an advantage. Like, this for instance. This thing is incredibly compact. Like, there are very little spaces wasted, and I think anytime there's an air gap, there's a reason behind it. I mean, look at this. He could have put a 2 meter fuel box in here, but he didn't. Why didn't he? I don't know. Do you want to try and get into a wellness head? No, I would, would not recommend it. Normal men, normal men would go mad. So anyway, so you see ammo parts very close to other components, particularly around the engine here. It's just, he doesn't care. He's like, I'm going to stick ammo wherever I like. I think it's partially to do with these heavy armor blocks. When the ammo gets detonated, these heavy armor sheets stop it from detonating everything else. Very clever. 
will actually have to steal that idea at some point. So, I, you could say it's like way too close to vital components, but uh, it isn't really, because it's shielded. Back here, you got stuff which is actually nicely spaced all by itself. Again, it's like heavy armor, just splitting it off, preventing it from like cooking off other things. It's, it's just... So, so much for that. And the one thing I can be sure of is that exposed material storage is not a good idea if you want to use this thing in the campaign and you want to use localized resource because if these get destroyed, the material they're holding gets destroyed as well. But then again, like, they're clearly here for aesthetic reasons and that'd be so easy to fix. Like, really, like, that's hardly a complaint. Hell, maybe that's why he left spaces everywhere. So, uh... Oh yeah, that's another thing, is that arguably you could be more efficient in, like, what is used for decoration and what isn't, because these things are not portholes, they are muzzle brakes. Muzzle brake is about 20 materials, and it's also reasonably heavy, whereas if you go to decorations, a deck port is 5 and 40. Wait, what was the muzzle brake again? So, just considerably cheaper, I guess. But again, this is aesthetic. Like, clearly, Owelna put these here, like, knowing damn well what he was doing. So at this point, I think, like, Owelna, you're just showing off. It's like saying, like, you see here? I can use expensive cannon cards as windows. And also, I can make lights blink on and off because uh, I am the god of control blocks. So, that's basically it really like this thing is I am very very impressed by this thing and more than a little, little intimidated and uh, so yeah the thing even has like aesthetic rudders on the back for the love of goodness so I guess all there is to do is like spawn in one of my ships and watch it get wrecked to finish off so I'm just gonna go right here spawn this in Skella you get one last chance Right, away you go. So, this hasn't been so much a review as me saying that a welder is a genius, and uh, I'm guessing a lot of you probably already knew that, because goodness knows when one of his designs rocks up in a tournament, it's a bit of a oh damn moment. It's a beaver moment, you say, oh damn, it's here. Is that, nope, see what I mean? Yep, see, that's entire cram volleys, they're just like, nope, screw you. Admittedly, the skiller is a bit cheaper than the python, but it's also considerably less clever in its design, so. So thank you all for watch, listening to me bang on at length about this uh, ridiculously well put together craft that I am unable to actually find any serious flaws with. Perhaps in a thousand more hours of From the Depths I could actually find something. Ooh, hello, the skiller actually managed to land a hit there. Actually, the skiller's doing really well. I think it's just because I spawned the damn thing so close. But in any case, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. How is the skiller doing? Repairing like mad. And it's bumps falling off. Who would have thunk? Yep, there we go, and the python's taking the lead. Farewell!